Alright, Travis Wayne Goodsell and count number duo. Alright, this one is uh, still under the Rico and uh, this has to do with uh, false uh, credibility and in this false credibility the defendant, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints claims to be the true church. Now the first one was true successor, this one is true church along with succession from the 1830 organization. So they're claiming true church based on being true successors. Evidence shows the defendant's organization, organizers, led by Brigham Young, did not follow the founding organizers, organization's process for succession of leadership after the murder of the founder on 27th June 1844. I should probably put in there Joseph Smith to identify the founder. And so what I present as evidence comes from the uh, a sole corporation has to have uh, um, I can't think of the word <laughs> uh, they're supposed to have um, a declaration to its members uh, as to how the church or the organization is to be run and succession is to be performed, etc., etc. I can't remember what the name is. Ah, it's bugging me. Um, and so uh, the Doctrine and Covenants that Joseph Smith had uh, published is that uh, instruction to the organization so that uh, the the members of the church could know how the church is to be run and what the doctrines are and, and uh, how to succeed the church and so yes despite the current Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints claiming that Joseph Smith did not leave instructions for how to succeed him they lie Yeah, they lied. Doctrine and Covenants, section 107, verses 21 and 22. See, Joe's, or Brigham Young left that part out when he was claiming succession with Sidney Rigdon in that debate they held in August. And so, in uh, this section, this is the evidence. This is from... Joseph Smith the founder and it's to show that the current defendant the current church has not followed this procedure in order to justify a claim that they are the true church so all you missionaries all you Mormons who go around the world and on social media claiming we're the only true church your church sucks I'm sorry you guys have been lying the whole time. You're not the true church. And here it is. Here's how succession was supposed to have been done upon Joseph Smith's death. Of necessity, there are presidents or presiding officers growing out of or appointed of or from among those who are ordained to the several offices in these two priesthoods. Now if you don't understand what that means, it means there are uh, offices in the two priesthoods. Quorums. And so in the Aaronic Quorum, which it previously discussed and explained how uh, the presidents of those Aaronic Quorums are supposed to happen, which is that only the members of that quorum are to vote for who the uh, 
presidency is to be. The president, counselors, voted by those who are in the quorum. So teachers don't vote for deacons president, and deacons don't vote for teachers president, etc. Deacons vote for deacons president. Now as you all Mormons know, as I've known, I've never voted for succession in presidency uh, in regards to deacons quorum, teachers quorum, priest quorum, because yes, there's supposed to be a priest quorum president despite the bishop being the head of the Aaronic priesthood and uh, to conduct the meetings for the priests. And then elders quorum presidents never voted. We don't do it in this church. It's not practiced. And why? Because that's not how Brigham did it. If Brigham didn't do it, he needs to make it a standing law that nobody else does it, because then that would presuppose that he was supposed to have done it, and because he didn't do it, he is not the true successor of the church. It's very simple. This is not complicated. And this goes to fraud for their credentials. They claim to be a religious organization, but instead are using that cover, that front, for criminal operations. And so, here in the beginning, I need to destroy their credentials, expose, expose the credentials as fraudulent. And that's what we're doing here. That's why these are the first counts. And so here's for the Melchizedek, or the first presidency of the church, the great high priest. And you would think, oh, it's the high priest groups, all who are high priests, who vote. No. Listen very carefully. Because Mormons make a big mistake in passing over words, ignoring words, changing definitions of words. I did that in my illiteracy book, and I'm going to try to make sure I get that put in here, that I am one who published the different types of illiteracies, and that will go to the educational fraud that the church is perpetuating on its members. Okay, so verse 22, of the Melchizedek priesthood, three presiding high priests, first presidency of the church, chosen voted by the body. What body? You have to go back to the proper noun Melchizedek priesthood. This is the one exception in the church. All the other offices, quorums, in the Aaronic and the Melchizedek are to choose, vote, within each quorum for who their presidency is supposed to be except for the first presidency and the first presidency is supposed to be a great grand priesthood Melchizedek priesthood meeting now I've done the videos I've done all the stuff about Adam on Diamon that's what this is referring to is that uh, Adam on Diamond is supposed to be the great priesthood meeting where the restored church is had where uh, the Melchizedek priesthood holders vote for the Messiah. What? Vote for the Messiah? <laughs> yes, that's how deceived we've been. That's how far they've taken us from the true origins. <sighs> so, anyway, we're not talking about that, we're talking about the lawsuit here. And so, uh, chosen by the Melchizedek priesthood body, the whole Melchizedek priesthood, not Aaronic priesthood, only those of the Melchizedek priesthood. That includes elders, and that includes 70, 
We used to have 70s at the stake level. Uh, that includes high priests. That includes other Melchizedek priesthood offices of which the church has not done all that could have been done. They did start up, or they did keep a, an apostles quorum. It wasn't really a quorum, it was just people were made apostles, but weren't part of the twelve apostles. Uh, and so there are quorums that could be added uh, depending on the needs of the church. And all of this is supposed to be done within the quorums for their presidencies, but for the head of the church, all Melchizedek priesthood holders, regardless of the office, are to vote for succession for the president and his counselors. And that's what it's saying right here. This is the documented evidence from the founder as to how to succeed him upon his murder, upon his death, upon his abandonment, upon whatever reason he's no longer the president. And then it continues, appointed and ordained to that office and upheld. There's the sustaining. So now he's sustained by the confidence, faith, and prayer of the church. This is where the Aaronic priesthood and women, and even children, I guess, if they want to participate, come into play. They're supposed to be supported by the confidence, faith, and prayer of the church. So in general conferences during the changeover, and even during in-between times where you give the sustaining vote, and everybody wonders, we're not voting. It's because they've changed the definition of vote. And it becomes a loyalty oath. Uh, and I cover that here in oh, a second here. Uh, they form a quorum of the presidency of the church. Okay, and then I, I talk about, this has never been practiced, and since my obtaining the Melchizedek priesthood, because this is my case, this is crimes committed against me. This is fraud committed against me. And so this particular count, even though it applies to all members of the church, I, I'm the one who's bringing up the lawsuit. So it, I have to have it applied to me. I've never been involved in a special Melchizedek priesthood session to vote for succeeding first presidency. Nor has the defendant ever held such vote because they could have just claimed well you just weren't a part of it <laughs> you didn't show up or you were doing something else or whatever but so here I shut that down right away because they're not they have no ground on this they they would be dumb if they even attempted to bring it up in the court and so yes the defendant the church has never held a vote for the first presidency by the Melchizedek priesthood holders. The defendant instead forces me and all other agents, agents are those who are termed members of the church, and I use the word agents rather than more uh, members for a count that's coming up in regards to uh, uh, fraud in regards to human trafficking. That's correct, Mormons, human trafficking. We are all commodities of the church, and I'll get into that when we get to that count. Uh, uh, the defendant instead forces me and all other agency agents to give loyalty oaths. Remember, we, ra <laughs> we raise our right hand to the square in that sustaining vote. We're giving loyalty oaths in conference. We're not voting. We're not sustaining. We're giving loyalty oaths. And during the defendant's general conferences called sustaining votes. So this is a big one. They're, they've deceived us as to the processes in the church. And uh, this particular one refers to succession. 